How many times have you watched like loads of videos saying that choose this exercise because this exercise leads to greatest EMG muscle activity so that has to lead to better muscle growth. Well in this video I'm going to tell you exactly why that's not exactly true. Essentially EMG is registered by an electrical current and this can come from let's say a surface electrode or maybe wires which again leads to the common belief that an increase in muscle activation leads to better muscle growth. So for example, let's say you did a seated dumbbell shoulder press and you did a lateral raise. If the lateral raise led to more or higher EMG, then that one must be much better for shoulder hypertrophy or muscle growth. So is EMG really necessary? So for example, you could do this right now, right? So sit in a chair, flex your quad, just like you do in a leg extension, and this will lead to higher EMG muscle activity, so muscle activation. And the reason for this is because when your muscles are in extremely shortened lengths, they need to work a lot harder and this does require more electrical input. Now, say for example, you have that exercise compared to a squat and that exercise leads to more EMG muscle activity. And I guarantee you know that the squat is gonna to lead to more muscle growth compared to the demonstrated exercise that I just explained. And as I've explained in many other videos, in very sciencey terms, the primary driver for muscle growth is the total magnitude of mechanical work as very well correlated with muscle hypertrophy. Now, like I said, that exercise I just explained doesn't have a lot of mechanical work whatsoever. One thing to also keep in mind is that tension in the muscle itself will also lead to more muscle growth, hence time under tension. You hear a lot of bro bodybuilders tell you this. So, exercises that have low EMG but high muscle growth might actually have more time under tension. And I'll explain and give you an example now. So for example, stiff-legged deadlifts, they're used all the time in most good programs for maximum muscle growth in the hamstrings, right? Now, the reason for this is because number one, it generates a lot of active force in the hamstrings, and number two, it generates a lot of passive force in the hamstrings, keyword, when they are stretched under load. Now, if we were to shorten their range of movements of let's say stiff-legged deadlifts, pull-ups and dumbbell flies and I use those other two exercises as an example because we know that they lead to good or great muscle growth for most people right so keyword as well there being range of motion now if you were to shorten the range of motion these exercises <coughs> my voice is going will probably not lead to as much muscle growth if all the other things are kept equal like total volume load etc so you've probably seen loads of YouTube videos and coaches telling people to do, um, let's say, barbell glute bridge or a lat pull down because they have the highest EMG readings, obviously, and hypothetical example here. And they will say, because these exercises have the highest EMG ratings, they must lead to more muscle growth. However, what they forget is this. Number one, they forget that tension in the muscle and the total mechanical work under tension is the primary stimulus for muscle growth. Now, to really see if EMG itself is really correlated to muscle growth, specifically in certain movements, we need to find this out. We need to find the intramuscular tension, so the tension in the muscle. So to do this, number one, we need to assess the movement and the range of motion, right? So if an exercise, for example, has a very small range of movement, moment, small range of movement, it will probably lead to less muscle growth. Number two, tension developed throughout the whole range of motion. So let's say for example, you did pull-ups, but you only did it half, like you only did this shit that most people do. The tension is not gonna be great through the full range of motion because you're not going all the way up, then all the way down. You're literally just doing that shit that most people do. And one thing I probably have to point out to actually accurately assess the intramuscular tension you need to know a few things, it will be very, very difficult as well. And talking again about these special coaches that use EMG ratings for their exercises when really, they'll say, they'll say something like this, right? They'll say, yeah, man, that lap pull down that I gave you, man, that's exactly why your back is exploding. And they forget that maybe you're giving them three workouts on their back per week. Maybe that, maybe have you thought about it could be the total mechanical work done, so the total work done you've increased volume which will increase muscle growth have you thought about that not the emg reading itself emg can also be affected by various things like noise literally where the equipment is a place radiation all sorts of stuff it can also actually be affected in let's say different studies right because different studies might use 
a surface electrode and other studies might use wires. So for those people that are saying, look, here's this study proving this and here's that study proving that, well, you have very, very, you have a lot of things to consider. So in a very general sense, you want to pick exercises that allow you to lift with more force and a longer range of motion. For example, like I said, pull-ups is very good. You can do weighted pull-ups and it's going to have a longer range of motion if you do the exercise properly, like a kind of demonstrating. You go all the way up and you go all the way down. You don't do this half rep shit. So that's the end of the video. I would personally use EMD as a very, very rough guideline. I won't count on it exactly. So that's that. Let me know your thoughts down below. I haven't made a video in ages. My speaking is absolutely terrible. But anyway, stay positive, stay smiling. And as always, let's get it. I'll see you in the next one.